Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with Shrewsbury Town reporter Lewis Cox. Lewis, uh, Shrewsbury won, Rotherham two after extra time, and unfortunately it wasn't fifth time lucky for Salah. No, the Wembley curse lives on. Mm. Yeah. Horrible day, to be honest. Uh, horrible to experience. You know, such a thrilling season, just not finished the way it should have. Yeah. Um, it's been down to the press conferences, the mix um, Can't tell you how much the players are feeling it. And some of them couldn't speak uh, beside themselves. You know, they managed to grab a word with a few of them. They were just heartbroken. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's, it's such a shame because they had such a thing this season. And they deserved, they deserved it. Yeah. 46 games, you know, they battled all the way. And, you know, they, they thought it was going to be their time mm. this time and it just didn't go to plan. So it, 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 Rob Rob was strong, strong yeah. physically and organised and town just weren't quite to that level. No, I mean, like you say, Rob Rob probably, on the, probably were the better side on the day, you would say. Disappointed with the way that Shrewsbury came out in that first half because yeah. it, it could have been if it wasn't for Dean Henderson over by half time. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't at the level that they against Charlton, were they? Um, home and away. But... You're right, like you give, give a bit of credit to Rotherham, they're a much better side than Charlton, you know, Lee Bowie's Charlton, very different proposition to that Rotherham side, strong, mm. um, and I just think they won battles all over the park, um, their centre-halves obviously won got the goal, but they were so strong, they were like immovable objects, Towns midfield first half, didn't get to grips with it mm. all, did they? we didn't see much of Nolan, who's obviously the man for town, really, the wingers not involved too much, so they won the, won the battles first half, especially, and you know, deserved something from the first mm -hmm. half of them, didn't they really? You would say they they deserve that goal town. I mean with the goals to concede, the ball from set players. We'll get on to we'll get on to yeah, this, yeah. their second goal, but um, there were warnings early on and they they didn't heed the warnings mm -hmm. and that hurts to be absolutely bitterly ill. It's worse because of the type of goals. Yeah. You know, for the whole season to, to go down to a couple of set pieces it's horrible. But no, they they don't want to have done more on the day. Start the second, second half when they equalised, you know, yeah, it, it, it got going. Um, Beautiful move, training ground move. Lovely, and uh, in my opinion, it was, it was like a, it was bittersweet that goal. They scored the goal, fantastic, the, the wind was in their sails. Five minutes later, Carlton Morris was breaking forward, fantastic, got another chance at it. Buckles his knee, goes off, actually second up after about an hour. A couple of minutes later, you get Bolton or Bluff for Cram. I mean, mm -hmm. they're all got Cram. So you've got your three subs used. And, you know, they haven't got strength in, in depth, this squad. There's, you know, with all, all respect to the guys off the bench, absolutely, there wasn't the, the depth of attacking ability to bring on, you know, maybe aside from pain. So to lose all your subs, you use them up by a 70th minute when you've got extra time coming. Mm -hmm. On a hot day as well, that's that, difficult, yeah. yeah. And it killed, that should have been the time after these guys went down and had the momentum to, yeah. to turn it around. They killed that. Mm -hmm. 70 minutes onwards, all Rotherham, pending, yeah. cramped up. Yeah. And yes, they didn't play as well as they could have, but 62 games, mm -hmm. yeah. Extra time, a lot of the same players being used. Alex yeah. Rodman's the fittest player in the squad by yeah. Country Mile, and he was cramped up on mm -hmm. 70 minutes. I mean, you know, they, it, they, there's nothing left in the tank, sadly, and there's nothing left in the tank against a Rotherham side that looked like they still mm -hmm. had a bit going for them, they still looked um, strong, and yeah. So, yeah. Um, but you think, you know, with Dean Henderson keeping them in the, in the tie with two great saves at the end, if they had seen yeah. out that, that extra time, then his comments would have been sky high. If they were going to go to a penalty shootout, then that was probably their best chance. Actually, it felt because of Rotherham kept missing the chances there, chance to chance that he thought it might be mm. like destined for town. Um, certainly, penalties was their best chance because they, they didn't have too many moments going forward. They looked weary and tired and they weren't causing Rotherham's. Uh, defence problems, but well, Henderson was magnificent. That save, 94th minute, I mean, wow, you're thinking, yeah. is this town's time? Mm -hmm. Is this going to mm -hmm. be the, the Wembley time? And take it to penalties, it's a lottery. And yeah. again, it's such a shame that it was mm. a set piece, you know, after keep making the saves, keeping them out from open play. Um, but now John Lewis, sub, let his man go. Um, I know he's, he's heartbroken again, as, as all the players are. So. Shame the way it happened, and a shame for the fans who were sensational today. Um, real great noise. It's it's a shame they didn't have more to, to cheer about because yeah they were unreal. I thought the sports better. Saying that, let's not get too downhearted. It has been an incredible season. If you'd said at the start of the season that they were going to finish third, just miss out on on Championship football, get to two Wembley finals, 
you know, a, a lot of fans would probably have taken that. You know, the sad thing is, um, it's billed as one of the biggest games in the history of the be. This was a once in a generation season, group of players, manager. Don't know what's going to happen there. Um, a bit of a now or never, you know, go and be the championship players might not get this chance again. Um, it just wasn't meant to be. So, uh, you know, I've tried to say to a few of them, you know, great season. Yeah. You know, think back to the, what a great season, but they're not really interested in it being a great season because... Well, it's hurting. I mean, they're hurting, aren't they? And yeah. You can, you can understand yeah. that. I mean, you know, in 10, 20 years when they're retired, I think, oh, you know, that season, all the memories. But for the next few months, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to be thinking, what a great season because they didn't get what they wanted out of it, ultimately. Yeah. Um, great memories, but, you know. So, got to look forward to next year. Now, now Paul Hurst, obviously, tend to want on to be the next Ipswich manager. A lot of people saying that he's as good as gone. Do you, do you think that, that that's, uh, that's done and dusted? Yeah, it's very coy in, in the sort of straight batted the, the responses. I mean, someone sent me a picture of the odds, which I think shortened as mm. soon as, you know, today's result came in. Yeah. I, I can't, you know, they, they're going to approach Hurst. They're obviously keen to have him. Um, the reports and they want to speak with him. And they've waited off obviously until this game. So for me, it's what does Paul Hurst want to do? I don't know the answer to that. Do you feel he's taking? Do you feel he's taking Shrewsbury as far as he can yeah. take them? Though? Well, I think he said to me a couple of weeks ago that this season they've jumped too far. That's what he said. You know. And um, to repeat this next season with Shrewsbury would be impossible. Mm. I thought I thought they'd have a stronger case and a bigger chance to keep him if they went up today. Yeah. Um, you know, if it is in, in switch that's the interesting part, interesting party. You know, would he, would he now see the, the championship move for Ips, which is the move for his career? He's, I think, kind of number one, his family. Yeah. Family live up north. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what works for him. Is Ipswich the proposition he wants? Are they going to be ambitious enough? I think, no, Ipswich don't spend money traditionally too, too much. I don't know. So maybe he might have reservations there, but they're going to be talks. You know, how do they go? How, what does he think in his heart of hearts? He's a, he's been a, he's a, he was a loyal player for Rotherham, mm -hmm. stayed there his whole time. Very loyal manager at Grimsby Town. You know, so there is that that's got you know, on Town's side. Does he have a sense of loyalty here? Do yeah. you think unfinished business? I don't know. But he's stopped so high at the moment into LMA, yeah. managed the year, you know, managed the year through, throughout the uh, leagues. I mean, um, if he was going to make the step up, yeah. potentially, then, then this was probably the time to do it. But at the same time, if you're Shrewsbury and you're, you know, you're, you're the management and you're, you're you know, the chairman, then you want to keep someone like Paul Hurst at the club. Yeah, they'll, they'll you know, do everything, everything to, to try and keep him. Uh, his stock's unbelievably high. You know, next season with Shrewsbury, anything could happen in League One. He might, and nothing against him or whatever players happen, he, he could be fighting the drop, mm. you know. Things could look very different, mm -hmm. couldn't they? Uh, I'd like to think that people would remember. Certainly, Hurst said recently, you know, footballing people would remember what what he's done. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to think he stops. You know, he's done a lot in the game, and yeah, I mean, the answer is yes. This is he stops so high. You know, he'd be. Some would say he'd be foolish not to take the chance. But does he think that Ipswich Town is the, is the right the right chance? Yeah. You know, and are there going to be any other Championship roles mm -hmm. come come up this summer? This mm -hmm. summer? Maybe, you know, his beloved Sheffield Wednesday. Who knows? I'm thinking out loud here. But, you know, what, what he's done in these 18 months mm. at this football club, pretty unbelievable, really, from the bottom of this division and, and heading straight for League Two. So, full credit there. You know, hopefully, come July, August, we're speaking with him as a shoes manager for next season. He's planning, he is planning to be making town, plans for town. Um, he'd made plans for the Championship for League One. So, he's got plans in place. Should he stay here? But we'll see how the talks go, I think. We will. Shrewsbury Town 1, Rotherham 2, uh, not to be for, for Salah today. Fingers crossed, maybe uh, sixth time lucky at Wembley in the not too distant future. For I think they want to come back. I don't know <laughs> they don't want to come back. They don't want to come back, no. Uh, neither do we. Uh, for all the uh, post match reaction, make sure you log on to Shropshire Star.